starting negotiations, the negotiators must establish their minimum requirements for the final agreement. These requirements, they form the bottom line, the agreement's characteristics below which the negotiators will not make a deal. When there are numeric values under negotiation, it is easier to understand this concept. For example, an employee negotiating a salary raise or in a broader view, increase uh, in the benefits we receive from uh, the company. Uh, the employee has a minimum value to close a deal of $100 uh, a month. It could be paid cash, in voucher, etc. Below this value, he decides that uh, he'll not stay in the company anymore. The $100 constitute then uh, his negotiation bottom line. When there are less concrete or more complex negotiation objectives, establishing the bottom line is more difficult. For example, two negotiators are discussing a commercial agreement comprised by 100 items. 70 of them are accepted by both, but 30 are below the level one side considers acceptable. Will the deal be made? Probably not. But what if 99 items were agreed and only one uh, is below the bottom line? Will the negotiation be successful? Not necessarily. It will depend on, first, the relative importance of the single item in comparison with the other 99. Second, how bad is the proposition for this item in the perception of the negotiation side not satisfied with the initial offer? The importance of the bottom line is not in establishing an inflexible target, but establishing what is unacceptable. This is quite hard to be precisely defined, but one must have a good idea of what would be the minimum before starting negotiations. And this minimum must be the real minimum, because if it's not achieved, the negotiation shall be interrupted momentarily or definitively. It's often recommended that the bottom line of each negotiation side be kept as a secret. That is, the other side must not know what is your minimum limit. While their interests, the objectives, agenda and options are usually openly discussed, the bottom line, at least initially, is kept in secrecy. This happens because if there is a significant power imbalance between negotiation sides, there will be a tendency to settle at the minimum level. As the negotiator with more power will try to impose this minimum level. If the negotiator's relative power is similar, and if there is a previous relationship in place, then the secrecy may not be as relevant. In doubt, the best is keeping your minimum limits to yourself only. Focus on the common interests as well on the options and negotiate the best you can. We'll continue in the next video.